Oh, right, right. We were running, you, running something. We were running. Running uh, something into the ground. Couldn't be us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. Look at this Stanley Cup final we got going on right now. Yeah, well, the, the, the video zoomed in a little bit, but yeah. look at that. Bruins, Bruins, Blues. Ah. I'm on the right side of history, even though on the wrong side of the actual result. You should have been, not to get all sports on you, but oh my goodness. Wow. What a hilarious... When did the Bruins become low-key? I got confused as to what like the Bruins' reputation is. Whenever anybody gets traded to the Bruins, they're like, it's so good to be in this winning culture. And you're like, yeah, yeah, winners, winners. And then whenever the Bruins get close to winning anything, everyone's like, oh, so of course the Bruins are going to lose because this is what they do. It's a very confusing back and forth reputation they have. It's it's very lucky that they did win one mm. because they'd be like the lightning right now where it's like they've been contenders for the past most of the past 10 years. But they got nothing to show for it. Elite uniform matchup. I don't know if we said it at the time when the Bruins played the, the Blues in the cup final. I think we were too busy making up songs. But <laughs> if we had any other time, we would talk about that's a very good uniform matchup. It is, but both uniforms could be better, which is which is the problem. Like, both of those teams have worn better uniforms oh, definitely. in their history. Like uh, the one, like the blues jersey I'm wearing right this, now. That one's the great. The Bruins logo you're rocking right now. Yeah, oh, we're wearing. Well, I like, the, I like the, uh, I like this one, but I also like the, uh, the one with the gold. Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. favorite one. Yeah, but basically, I mean, r really, the 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 blues, the blues right now are very good, and their reverse no, retro is unbelievable. Yes, they are. Are they the uniform? Oh, definitely not their team. They yeah, lost. That's what I was gonna say. They lost like six hundred games in a right row. The right now are very good. No, no we don't not. talk about actual performance. We don't, we don't <laughs> yeah, look at standings or performance. We, we want to see. How everything looks. Yeah, I Blues jerseys, always good. Blues are in the top three or top five, I think. Except in like the, the David Backus era Blues jerseys, like the, the like the ones with the piping up. Those ones are fucked. Those, those are tried too hard to be serious. Yeah. And what's good about Blues jerseys is they look like stupid things that probably shouldn't be involved in sports. Yeah, the more circusy, the better. When you're talking about a Blues jersey, they got so cartoony in the '90s. And I love those, which is why the reverse the retros ones? are awesome. Right, because the, the reverse yeah. retros are an homage to that without actually going all the way. I'm, I'm a big fan of the reverse retros. And, and I'm a, like even bigger of a fan because everybody who takes hockey seriously seems to fucking hate them. Yeah. So I was like, hell yeah, fully in on these. You know what's a tweet that everyone always sends out, though? Like, dudes, dudes complain about blah, blah, blah. Or like dudes never want to talk about fashion. But then they oh, talk yeah. about jerseys all the time. And I'm like, time out. Love talking D about dudes fashion. Dudes don't want to talk about fashion? <laughs> right. What, am I just going to look like an idiot think, all day? I think that stereotype has changed a whole lot. Like, That's super dated now, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Like, even the most casual dudes yeah. are, like, before there were the dudes who were, like, into fashion and, and stuff like that or, like, into sneakers mm -hmm. and things. I think even the most casual dudes are, are down with fashion now. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I... Used to go very hard on. Uh, I used to to rail heavily against dudes. This was pre Gillette commercial. Dudes have gotten smarter. Then the Gillette commercial came out. Dudes still not quite. Not where we want them to be. But yeah, making progress, trending in the right direction. And we have our sponsor for today to thank. Today's episode is brought to you by, by dudes. Gillette. <laughs> no, brought to you by dudes. Gillette. The better a man can get. <laughs> A little progress. Uh, yeah, no, like uh, hygiene has gotten better. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Gene. <laughs> uh, fashion sense gotten a little bit better. I, I hope behavior has gotten a little say, bit better. Behavior. Still got a ways to go. It took us go. a while. We made fun of toxic masculinity for a while before we actually knew what it was. But once it was explained to us, we were like, yeah, hopefully we're not doing that. And I think that fellas are starting to move away from that. Um we're going to talk about toxicity in the bonus episode for this week because this bonus this week's bonus episode is going to be kind of a recurring game thing whatever based off of last week when we were talking about system of a down for a little bit. I'm going to show you a little system of a down 
you're going to show me a little stuff that you like, and it's going to be called, what will it be called? What's mine is yours? Yeah, I like what's mine is yours. What's mine is yours, and that'll be a thing that we can bust out on Fridays, like bringing in a, a wash guy. We, we want to have a few different uh, clubs in our bag for the Friday episodes, but yeah, we're gonna. You're gonna learn a little about a little about. You're gonna learn about a little toxicity, talking about system of a down. But I'm gonna play you a couple tunes. Excited to see what you're gonna show me. If you're gonna have me play a video game, what you're gonna have me do? Who the heck knows? But it'll be an opportunity for stuff that's a little too either one of us to be brought into the the brunch world. So yeah. that's gonna be really cool. If you're not a Patreon subscriber yet, there's incentive for you to join. Because we are knocking on the door of Affleck Week. We are within, let's see, I think we're within 35 no of way. Affleck Week. We are getting very close. We are 33 wow. away from Affleck Week. So patreon.com slash listen to brunch. $5 gets you the bonus episodes. $10 gets you the video episodes and bonus episodes and a discount in the merch store. Being a Patreon, a patron of any kind gets you access to have to be in on the conversation. That's whether you want to chat with us on Patreon, which we'll throw questions out there. If we yeah. have ideas, like we just threw out there, hey, should we put out clip episodes of just our ads? We're going to start clipping the ads from now on. So every now and then we'll throw out an episode. It'll be a bonus thing that will have just a shitload of our episode of our ads. And you can be in on the conversation there. Those are always fun. It's good to hear from you guys. And also the uh, the, the buzz box. You can text us, leave us a message, whatever it may be. But Hell we're getting yeah. close. We're getting close. Very excited. Have no idea what Affleck Week is going to entail, but it's going to be a fun time. We'll have to talk about his appearance on Bill Maher. Oh, no. Do you remember that? No. Someone showed it to me recently. I think it, I knew about it at the time, but somebody... He had a guest on, and the guest was, I think he was calling liberals hypocrites because he was saying that uh, American liberals stand up for gay rights in America, but they don't call out religions that aren't um, that aren't accepting of, of gay people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there were reasons the guy was suggesting why people don't, and... I think he was. I think the guy was kind of pushing, like you guys just want to come off as woke or whatever. And Ben Affleck, perhaps not even listening to the conversation at all, just went off on the guy. Really? Yeah, and he was like, "You lump everybody together, blah blah." And he was like, he was accusing the guy. I haven't seen. Maybe I don't understand the video well enough, but he was accusing the guy of doing what a lot of Americans have done and stuff, just with, in terms of Islamophobia and everything. And he was. But th that video was known for, like, Ben Affleck goes from zero <laughs> to one billion really quick. I'm very excited about it's it It's very, um, obviously, different topics, but it's very Sway and Kanye. I, have, I haven't even seen that one. Really? Well, yeah. that's going to have to kick off Affleck week. <laughs> okay. We're going to kick off Affleck week. With the Sway infamous How Sway video. You've never seen How Sway? I've heard How Sway, but I've never... How Sway? <laughs> yeah. I've never... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the video. How Sway. How Sway has some hygiene energy to it. He flips out on Sway because Sway's like, hey, you got money. You can empower yourself. Don't depend on these other people to lift you up. You can lift yourself up. And Sway starts... Or Kanye starts yelling at him and he's like, with with no due respect <laughs> fuck you sway. i am not taking it i think he actually says i don't take advice from people less successful than me <laughs> oh man it's like well that sucks kanye because we could all use advice and nobody is as successful as you right so you're you're kind of trapping yourself you're not imagine not taking advice I mean, like, I, I there's a there's a certain like cutoff where you're like, all right, this person hasn't done shit, so I'm not taking advice from him. But like, Sway's clearly a smart person, yeah. Like, and who's been around a lot of people and, and can probably offer some helpful advice. How do we choose the people from whom That's we a take good advice? Question. I just kind of take it. I, I'm very a la carte. You could give me a piece of advice, and depending on how my day's going, I'll either think that sounds like really good advice, or I'll be like. I don't know. Maybe he's too close to me, and maybe yeah, like I don't know. It just—I I think we—I think a lot of it is like we 
it has to be what we want to hear. Right, yeah. With like the Gavin Gavin Belson's uh right hand man in Silicon Valley. All I know is that he has a blood boy. <laughs> he does have a blood boy <laughs> who smokes mad pot. But it's you know best. you know what I'm talking about? He has a like a right hand man who's there for everything. Eventually oh, he yeah, gets yeah, phased yeah, out yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Hoover comes in. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Hoover, I remember at the time thinking it's like, like his shaman, what a terrib- basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um except does is a shaman part or, of my ignorance? I don't know. It's it's a guy who's like very zen. A person, uh, right? So a person regarded to having access to influence in the world and good and evil spirits. So like a lot of right. It's like a, a very, I'd say, spiritual guy yeah. type of yeah. of thing. Shaman is often associated with like trips, right? I think so. Yeah. Or am I just basing yeah, that like on a when Father you, like, John song? Psychedelics. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's good to have somebody who can like guide you through the process. Yeah. If that was wrong, I apologize. We are the is two stupidest people in the world. Sherpa? Let's see what a Sherpa is. All I know is Sherpa in the video game sense because like there's a um there's if you're like you're going into a video game that's very intensive, you want to have somebody that who's that's there with you to help you guide you through the process. So that sounds like could be a Sherpa in a drug sense too. It says uh Somebody known, renowned for their skill in mountaineering. That sounds right. Like going up to uh, Mount Everest, you won't need a Sherpa. Interesting. If I'm and going up to Mount Everest. Sherpa, Sherpas cost like a billion dollars. Really? Yeah. Sherpas make bank? They don't make bank. They like, they get like a small chunk of it. And then like, you, a lo- I don't know where, how the money divides, but I know you have to pay a ton to get a Sherpa, but the Sherpa doesn't necessarily get a ton of the money. Really? Yeah. Well, that that's kind of like Patreon, where if you subscribe, we're not getting all the money. A lo- we're getting we're we're getting enough to to pay the 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 microphone fees and whatnot. But a lot of that's going to Jack Conti, and good for him. What a million dollar idea he had. Yeah, it's probably more. I than was a million going to say, idea. but it's more than <laughs> a million. Do you think that people make a million dollars off of Patreon? Do you think that anybody like with subscribers makes a million dollars off Patreon? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Not like, no question. I bet there. Are I was just that about like to disgustingly say. I bet so and so does, but I don't want to be. It's mean not to not calling that anybody out. Right. Yeah. Shout out anyone who's getting a million dollars off of Patreon. That's just one of those ideas where there's people on on OnlyFans that have made like a million dollars in a single month. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so that's a great idea. Good for that. Uh, good for Jack Conti. Good for Patreon. If you haven't joined yet, please do it. We have bigger news, but it's easier to transition to this on the subject of great ideas, begrudgingly great ideas. I do respect anybody who makes a ton of money off of kind of nothing. And Jack yeah, Conti definitely. does not qualify because in addition to being a uh, great musician, Patreon probably meant very he had to have a lot tool. of meetings and like he had to bring in business people and figure out, okay, it's a good idea in theory, but how do we make this happen? And you're right. It's so useful for everybody. But the people I respect. Like, the grifters, I, basically. I, yeah, you're right. I was going to say, like, and I don't respect Jack Conti for coming up with Patreon. If you haven't listened to Pompa Moose, check them out. They got some good songs. I'll toss them on the brunch playlist. Let me mention one of their songs, Beating the Horse. So now that has to go on the As Heard is on brunch playlist. When are you going to drop Nailed that it? link? Because I, I, I know. I've been chipping away at it. I think I think we're getting close to where it's like it's ready to go. You think it's ready? Uh, I'll put it in beta testing. Okay, perfect. I'll send it out to you and a couple other people being like, what do you think? Oh, should, speaking of which. Should we should we mention the, the idea that we had? Uh, if we're talking about like beta test. We're becoming more of like. A tech company. Yeah, we're like we're 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 in on things or in the early going. So, <laughs> should we talk about the idea that we have for about uh, shorting memes? I'm giving you full credit. I would okay. love to say that we had this idea. You had it in a conversation we were having, yeah. and I've you, never you jumped on something. You came with up all with fours. the uh, the idea. You got the ball rolling, and I I sort of like packaged it into like, hey, this is an idea that we should do. Because, oh, right, right. We were running you, something. We were running running uh, something into the ground. Couldn't be us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the the meme format of um, getting the vaccine does not mean blank. Love you it. were like, I was like, I fucking love this meme format, and you were like, yes, absolutely. I'm going to fire off ninety fucking ideas <laughs> all in a row. Let's just get them all out there at once. And I was like, 
Yo, what if we came up with the idea of shorting memes where Love it. where like a meme becomes popular. Obviously, it has a limited lifespan. Most memes do. So let's get in, go in on hard on the memes. We'll buy and just really fucking stock up on them. I don't really know how the stock market works, but this is what sounds this like. This sounds like shorting. shorting. Yeah. yeah, I think so. We stock up on, on a certain meme. We get in really hard. We go hard in on them. And then we dump them immediately after we short them. So we do like... 45 to, to 200 of the memes, mm -hmm. and then we sell. You sell. We get so out. That, that means so we, this is how we get out, I think. Definitely throw out a mi way too many. They don't even all have to be good. Maybe we'll tag some brands and some influencers to see if certain ones will get retweeted. Just really try to boost up the, the value, which again, this is what shorting means, everybody. Mm -hmm. Trust us. Uh, episode brought to you by Robin Hood. We... <laughs> um, <laughs> And then here's how we get out on it. So we tweet a bunch of them. Then we take like maybe a two-minute break. And two minutes later, you see us quote tweet another one of those memes with, couldn't be us. <laughs> 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 and just every time you see the two, those uh, that meme format from now on, just be like, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> just a uh, well, uh, late arrival over. here. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man was there traffic <laughs> <laughs> this check out this guy buying the dip yeah well uh, uh uh yeah i feel like we need uh, I, my biggest hold up <laughs> on, on getting in on this practice was i i wanted a um official way to announce that we are buying and selling yeah so like i wanted like a bell or something um or just uh, like maybe a gif that signifies that we're getting in on something and a gif to signify we're out on something. I don't know. We, maybe it's something that we could think think on, but I think that we need an official entry and exit point on certain memes. I mean, we've long talked about a gif photo shoot. So we yep. could do that or... Although, gifs... Gifs aren't in trouble, but video reactions are so much cooler now, which the is wild because back in the day, nobody wanted to press play on a video ever but now if like, let's take steven a's uh burner for example video responses and maybe it, they're just so much better because those videos have steven a smith in them and are there no they're automatically videos the do definitely hit a little bit harder like the sound can put it over the top like when and will like, ratios yeah if it's a video <laughs> oh my goodness. And I think at this point we got like a lot of overexposure to a lot of the same gifts so they yeah. don't they don't don't work as well anymore um th the big problem with the video responses is that there isn't the database that there is for gifts like right you have to it's work to find some of these videos totally i got nothing you can like search like if you search you have to like google it download the video fucking uh post it on twitter like it's a lot of work it's a lot more work i use loopback to record audio from my computer then use quicktime to grab it and have to set loop back to what i'm recording then that video isn't even tweetable because quicktime videos aren't oh, tweetable yeah, so right. then i gotta bring it into iMovie Jesus. and export it i just got steps. i just got adobe uh premiere mm -hmm. so i'm gonna start working on that but it legitimately is a while i have a f i have a uh it's real it's really just my favorites but my my favorites on my phone oh, yeah, are yeah. just all gifs and videos i have ready to go but so like, it's just the when Tim I first Heidecker. <laughs> right. When I first wanted to use uh, Jerry Seinfeld, what the fuck are you doing? You stupid <laughs> piece of shit. Great reaction video. Yeah. That was like my day. Yeah. There, I may have been on the clock that day. Jack Conti needs to come up with a, a second million dollar idea for a, a video database. I mean, Twitter could just yes. do it. A video database built into the Twitter app to search videos. Totally, if reactions. there was right, exactly. If there, if it was a click away the way it is with gifts, then videos would be hot in the streets. We got to put video on the internet. Maybe that can be our idea. If we get a B, right? V O I. Right. Yes, V O I. That's one of the great Silicon Valley <laughs> moments. R O I. You know what that stands for? Return on investment. No, radio on internet. Which we never talked about that, but Spotify literally. Is like, yo, what if we put radio on the internet? They're kind of moving towards that right now. It's like, what if we do? What if we do live? What if we do live shows that you can listen to and live music? Yeah, um, that'd be sick. On the on the Spotify thing, somebody tweeted at me. 
this is going to be a what's mine is yours thing because you got me into Houndmouth, but somebody tweeted at me and said, hey, got any, uh, I'm starting to get into Houndmouth. Got any recommendations? So I was like, I got a couple minutes, made a playlist, made it real quick. That was tough, though, because then it's just like, yo, check out the first two albums. All their albums. Yeah, check out their albums. Right. Um, I'm, and I, I'm a big fan of, of Golden Age. Shout out Rado era Houndmouth. But I put together a playlist, and I was like, very cool. Put it out there. And then I looked at it, and I accidentally left off this party. Mm-hmm. And I don't think this person would have understood it because they don't listen to Howmouth. But I wanted to follow it up and be like, hey, if anybody clicked on that, I left off this party by accident. It should be on there. Because I feel like this party is the most controversial Houndmouth song. And I ride for it. Yeah, I mean, I really like it. It's just it was the most controversial because it was the first single to come off the like the experimental era Houndmouth. Yeah, um, which I, I like. I've, I I grew to love, but it yeah. was very jarring at the beginning. So like, maybe if you're doing a Houndmouth playlist, throw this party on first. Ooh, that would have been nuts. I yeah. I should have done that. I should have let it off with like, uh, with Golden Age or Waiting for the Night. Yeah, I feel like th- that is uh, that's like more the way to go because then you got no expectations. You go into it, you're like, "Oh, this is pretty funky. I like it." Yeah, and then I I feel like that happens sometimes where like a a, a musician scales it down. Yeah, to- into their career and they get more simplistic, and then like Hamoth just went the opposite way. Hamoth rules. Got to we. There's no reason for us to not have them. Hamoth dropped on. the new album challenge. They should drop the new album. Those fellas know what the hell they're doing. What was I going to say about... Oh, Million Dollar Ideas, okay? Dude with the sign. Dude with sign. We've never talked about him. I am officially out on him. Been out on that guy for a while. I actually... I had a... Oh, there it is. You know when my official out on that guy was? Uh, When he was at the Super Bowl. When he was at Uh the Super Bowl and he was like paid to, to be there... And he held up the sign for like Bud Light or whatever it was, and it was clearly like uh, it was a Bud Light lemonade or something. And he held up the sign, was like Bud Light lemonade. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, it's maybe it's a jealousy thing, but I was like, fuck that guy. It's just such a stupid idea, right? And he's making so much money right. off it. Also, fuck that guy because we only do Bud heavies on this podcast. That's right. Unless Bud Light wants to, um, unless Bud Light wants to get involved. Yeah, Bud Light or Bud Heavy. It's, like it's the same company, but like we'll all. Here's what if a, Budweiser came to us and they were like, "Hey, would you? Lo- we will. Um, how about this brunch presented by Bud Light Seltzer Mango Flavor? What would you say? My answer might surprise you. I would say yes, definitely. It's, it's, yeah, it's an, yeah, yeah, right. It's a sponsor yeah. and it's it's an alcohol sponsor. Right. Like I can get down Super with that. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, we're let's see. It took about but, 15 seconds, but I c- can be off, but heavy. <laughs> right. Also, uh, Wash is brought to you by Vizzy. So, like, if we if they were brought to you by Vizzy and we were brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer, that'd be great content ideas. Really like Seltzer Wars. Yo, that would be <laughs> sick. I tried to do a subtle Vizzy drop uh, with a friend. A friend was like, so hungover, drank about a million, whatever it may have been, claws yesterday, and I was like, should have had Vizzy. It's got antioxidants, and I don't think they responded. But <laughs> have um, you had Vizzy yet? No, I have not. Have you? No, but that makes us the only two circling back fans who haven't. That's, because let me tell yeah. you, like, they're, they're influential, man. Yeah, the the way Bruntouchables probably don't actually do anything with the, the, the Bruntouchables like our ads. I don't know if the it actually pays off. No, probably not. I don't well, know if they've spent in the, our experience with advertisers. It they would suggest that they don't pay off. You know, because... we did a thing with DraftKings a while back, and Bruntouchables did get in on that oh, yeah, because right. I think they were like, "I play DraftKings anyway, so yeah. might as well help these it guys." Was a out. bit of an incense, incentive too, I think. Right. It was like use promo code Brunch, and we would see a little bit every right. time someone used it and then we checked one day and then oh DraftKings was like hey uh where should we send a check and we were like oh there's gonna be a check and they're like yeah some people signed up did we're they like, ever huh. send that by the way because oh, yeah they did okay yeah. because i did like one of those like find mass money things Ooh. and i got i had money from DraftKings. really yeah and i was like i don't remember like, I ever one of those being in on DraftKings. i had money from a very random prominent company 
I won't say what because I'm always afraid that the internet is just going right. to use something to, to ruin my life. But it was a company that we see every day. And I was like, why would that company owe me Same, money? Right. And then I looked it up and it was like, a dollar. Do you want it? And I was like, yeah. give me my information. <laughs> oh, <you said> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I ended up filling it out. But so this dude with the sign. I'm out on him because he wait, wait. Here's my idea for uh, uh, a Budweiser sponsorship. By the way, yeah. Uh, what if what if uh, what if Budweiser was like, yo, we'll sponsor the podcast, but we gotta we gotta split we gotta split it down the middle. But brunch presented by Budweiser versus Bud Light, and they just split it down the middle, and one of us was on one side, and we had to ride for like Bud Bud Heavy or Bud Light. Oh my God! You know what? Call uh, Dibs Budweiser. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not. Dang. No. Budweiser has always already established its loyalty with with me. I know, but they sent you. Did they send you Bud Heavy stuff? Yes, Budweiser. Dude, that stinks. I friggin' made up Budweiser. Nope. Nope. What? Well, I got that that like care package from Budweiser. By the way, do you know the story behind it? No. I literally tweeted a picture. Um. It was like a picture of a of a, a couple dudes hanging out outside of whatever the old stadium in San Diego was, the old baseball stadium when they had the MLB All-Star game. Just a couple of dudes up on a hill sitting on a pickup truck watching the All-Star game on TV with the actual stadium in the background. Yeah. It's like the, the best vibes of all time. And I tweeted the picture and I was like, yo, the vibes here are immaculate. And there was like one Budweiser in the picture. And Budweiser responded. They were like, we spy the king. And I was like. I love you. And they were like, slide in our DMs. We'll send you some shit. So that's the difference between us. I tweeted one time, I'm watching an NHL game, an NBA game, and my weight all at the same time. And then Michelob Ultra responded <laughs> and said, uh, like, need a beer to go with that? And I think I like blocked them. I was <laughs> like, what are you, how'd you get this information? This is, that was a personal it's private a, it's joke. A, it's a private Twitter account. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you doing? What are you going to do to me? And, that's that. I have no relationship <laughs> with Michelob Ultra. But, I mean, if it were Budweiser, I think I would have let my guard down a little bit. Yeah, I was... What if Michelob Ultra just sent me a shitload of stuff? I don't cool. care. Yeah, yeah I mean, what are you talking about? I, you keep bringing this up. You're like, what if this alcohol company was yeah. like, we like you? Wouldn't that be so crazy? Wouldn't that be so weird? What would, oh my like, God, what would what you do? do? Like, I'd be like, send me boots. Yeah, that'd be the, the move. only answer. That'd be the move. Uh, I do like the idea of Here. Budweiser versus Bud Light. Yeah, that's never. I don't think that's ever been done in podcast history. This is the only. This is the maybe the only time that our personalities have helped me. I think that if it were based on personality, I would a thousand percent win Budweiser. Budweiser? Yeah. And personality, I'm more personality likely to wise, have a but fridge full I, of Budweiser. But I think that's because of of, of misreading. Like, I think people would mis misread me as a Bud Light. I'm not a Bud Light guy. I'm a Budweiser guy. I'm a uh, I'm a full bodied yes adult male. No, that's absolutely not what I am. The easiest but. way to make any generic hangout cooler is to swap out Budweiser, but swap in Budweisers for Bud Lights. It's such a game changer. I think I mentioned last year. The opposite. opposite. Swap, swap in, in Bud Lights. Like, okay, yeah. or Bud Lights. Okay, yeah, I, I was uh, I was out on a boat. We were swimming. It was a great time, and they didn't. They just had all Budweisers instead of Bud Light, and it was the happiest day of my life. Because I was expect. I, I was. I'm totally fine with Bud Light. Bud Light's great, but obviously Budweiser is a better time. I was psyched. Yeah, I think there's a. Uh... I think there's something here. Yeah. I think there's something here. I like the idea of having a competing uh, presenting sponsorship, but it has to be from the same company, obviously. Yeah. What if it's brought to you by Pete versus DJ over Budweiser, and it's just us competing <laughs> for which one of us is the Budweiser what if, guy? What if, a, what if a repeating theme on every episode of Brunch was like the Budweiser crown award, where like the better performer – from that week's episode gets to be sponsored by Budweiser that week, whereas the other person has to drink Bud Light. Oh, I don't hate that. 
Like it's it's basically like the title. I get a lot of weight from all that Budweiser. Though. <laughs> Fuck you. It's like the title belt from each episode of Brunch. Right. Who has the Budweiser in front of them versus the Budweiser who has crown, the which in is front like of them. yeah. I feel like they wouldn't like that though no, because, because then it's they'd suggesting be, that one is less. That, than yeah. Him. Yeah. What if? All right. So let's settle on this. We'll have one of whichever alcohol Budweiser chooses in front of both of us and the episode and the podcast will be presented by that thing of their choosing you got it yeah so maybe we both got budweiser seltzer mangoes in front of us it's brought to you by budweiser seltzer mango i like the idea of it being budweiser wait bud bud light seltzer mango i like the idea of it being bud light seltzer mango because brunch is such a short name yeah, where it's that, like, yeah. We could just like pod- write brunch sp- really small and make the presenting sponsor <laughs> huge. Yeah, I do like that idea a lot. Boy, we're we're thirsty for a uh, well, now, title sponsor. I Didn't even know about that until one second ago. Now there's a uh, now there is Bud Light Platinum Seltzer. So Our, Bud, Bud Light Platinum Seltzer, man- strawberry mango. Nice presenting sponsorship. That's right. Toss like mule at the end of it. I feel like everyone's working mule into something. But screw, dude with the sign. Yeah, what's the backstory there? Because you you were texting me and you said, uh, "Don't know how you feel about this guy. Don't know how much you know about this guy. But don't do any research because I want to talk about his backstory on the podcast." Yeah, so I'm out on him because the other night he was holding up a sign that said, "People who have thousands of unread emails are psychos," and in general, this account just throws out some like very s- low hanging fruit, uh, like, just like relatable a, things. Right. It's or like, just like super generic things, like right. wash your hands during the pandemic. Like the whatever. most popular one was like stop replying all to company wide emails, and everyone's like, "Oh my god, I hate when people do that." Right, like, right, because you're not supposed to do that. Right. Okay, got it. And again, shout out this person because this is the bare minimum, making tons. Here's the backstory. I looked I looked this person up because I was like, I'm very jealous that they do nothing. They make a ton of money, and this is the best part. Nobody knows who they are. That's true. They just live and do the internet Anonymously, by their choosing. Basically. Right. Although I'm pretty sure his name's probably out there. Because he's probably he's probably one of those guys that like wants his name out there in terms of like doing profiles and things like that. He just seems hmm. like a kind of guy. Dude with a sign. I looked it up. Yes. Is a Fuck Jerry production. No, it's not. Here's a story in Forbes. In October 2019, Seth Phillips and Jerry Media founder Elliot Tebele, Tebiel took to the streets of New York City's Soho neighborhood to hold up a cardboard sign with a simple protest, stop replying all to company-wide emails. Relatable. The photo was originally set for his Instagram account, but after sharing the second post... Uh, saying Seinfeld is way better than friends in front of a friend's billboard and online following began brewing and the two realized they needed to create an account specifically for these protests. Thus, dude with sign, the, thus the at dude with sign Instagram account was created within four months. The account grew to reach more than four million followers. That is so inorganic, man. That is so inorganic. I hate that so much. Right, right. Oh, that is that makes me so that makes me that makes it so much worse. Does it make you feel dirty I, if you ever shared it? Yeah, like I don't know if I've ever shared one of them, I don't but think like so it's either. just like I hate that when like it's it didn't happen. It didn't a guy didn't luck into that right. by by doing something that he wanted to do. It was somebody who was like, "Yo, what can we do to go viral?" And it it's presented as just random hot guy probably isn't very smart just has this one cool idea and you're like yo got to tip my cap nope it was it's just the dudes who content stole, people who yeah. right and if you even want to call them content people because obviously they've got a shady past with with what they do content wise yeah that is messed up so is it is the the actual guy one of the guys from fuck jerry yes I don't know which. What, they, oh, they, they both work for Fuck Jerry. Phillips is a content creator for the board game What Do You Meme, an Instagram meme account, Fuck Jerry in 2018. Jerry Media owner, blah, 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 got in hot water with blah, blah, blah. And it just says, like. Yeah, so there are two guys that, yeah, run, two people. that run Do the Sign? So regular chain smokers. Really? Yeah. Are they. Uh, I don't think. All that, I know is the dude with the long curly hair. Right. I think there's, there's one face of it, but I think that there's, oh, there's two people. 
What, what the other guy fucking writes on the sign? I, I maybe. I think. What's it's like, the other guy and dude with the sign do? I think it's like a. I think it's a classic. Um, it's 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 a classic what are they Maroon called? Five. Uh no. What was the the what was the the quartet that just broke up? Oh, Daft Punk. Yeah, it's a classic Daft Punk. You only see two of them. But there's four of them. The the other two are just feverishly writing. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I, I would love to know what the uh what the other dude and dude with the sign does. I think the so I think I'm assuming he's the guy who just takes the pictures. But I, so I th- I think the other guy is the founder of um Jerry Media. Let me see. I'm gonna look up that guy's name and see if I've maybe seen him in anything. Yeah, I don't. I I wouldn't know. I I believe that like. there's three guys in like fuck Jerry because I. There was uh, like a special on them, however many years ago. Yeah, so this guy Elliot was the face of Fuck Jerry. Okay, I hate it. Right? I hate it so much. All Fuck right. that guy. Now let's talk about why they were holding up the sign. The thirty-six. The the. If you have thousands of emails, you're a psycho. This has become a a topic and discussion lately, but it pops up every now and then where like someone will see my phone and they'll be like. You have so many unread emails, oh, blah, blah. And I feel like psycho is always thrown around. Now, insensitivity to mental health aside, the the whole thing of if you have a thousand unread emails or thousands, for a time I was over a hundred thousand, one day out of boredom, I, I got it down to like 50,000, but whatever, I could have a million for all you know, who cares? You didn't know what emails were like a year ago, not a year ago, but like, in our lives, we didn't know what emails were. There aren't there. There's no etiquette here. Right. Get out of here. Like, there's no rule book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, also very weird uh, crossing of path. I mean, I agree with you. A very weird crossing of paths here. I literally have my work email open, um, and I have two thousand one hundred and ninety-one unread emails. So, not a. I, well, I, I mean, you could make the case I'm a psychopath, but um, also not for that reason though. No. Right. Uh, Second email on uh, of my two thousand plus unread emails, uh, mailbag question. Oh, this is my work email. Mailbag question. I see your Affleck week tweets, but I hope this email finds you well. Which is to say that I hope this email finds you currently catching some rays on your deck, freaking out over Hall's first game as a Bruin or listening to the new Taro, Taylor, Taylor album. Oh, but here's my mailbag question: grab. As a Bostonian, who is your Boston-born actor, and why is it? Who's your favorite Boston-born actor, and why is it Chris Evans? So, like, th- this is a real Affleck. We, you, you know we're going to do Affleck week. Yeah, subscribe. So, like, why would you yeah. ask me that question? Yeah. My favorite Boston-born actor is obviously Matt Damon. It has to be for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't but, know. but, no, like, Affleck. Connie Britton? Affleck is probably, Affleck's, I don't know, we've never discussed the... The actual like merits of Affleck as an actor. Yeah, I think that that he's always just been kind of a, a fun conversation because yeah. he's he can be. I always like that he's there. Yeah, but save it. We're right. <laughs> Wait, nice try. Thirty more. Thirty one. Two more. Uh, more patrons. N- nice we'll talk try. About it. On the subject of how mouth and that playlist, my friend accidentally gave me the greatest line that I'm going to use all the time going forward. We were doing our Zoom poker game, and I was playing one of their songs. It was, I think it was uh, Coming Round Again, and my friend, he meant this sincerely. I have no idea how he did, but he said, yo, what's that Bare Naked Ladies song that sounds like this one? If I had a million dollars? That song sucks, right? And I was like, I am absolutely going to say that whenever somebody is playing a song. I'm going to say, what's that Bare Naked Ladies song that sounds like this? And just compare it to If I Had a Million Dollars by the Bare Naked Ladies. Because that is a very, very stupid song. It's a fun song. Yeah, but like, it's a, did he say like it's a stupid song is like, like, I fucking hate that song? I think he actually may have said fuck that song. Yeah, that song rules. (laughs) I think that song's great. Also, like, maybe the best, uh, the best finish to a song ever. Just if I had a million I'd dollars, I'd be rich. I had a joke book that uh, one of the jokes was, what happens if you throw a green rock into the Red Sea? 
it gets wet. And that was by far my favorite joke in that book. That's and my parents really were like, joke. no, no, no. There's like smarter jokes in here. I'm like, nah, I would pause it. This is smarter because it's a, it takes you to a place you didn't think it was going to go. My kind of humor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. But I think I'm going to start doing that, though, every time a song's on. Regardless of genre, it'd be like a reggaeton song. Like, I don't know What's that I... Bare Naked Lady song yeah. that sounds like this? <laughs> if I had a million dollars? Yeah, fuck that song. <laughs> It's very funny because, like, obviously the biggest, uh, the easiest Highland Mouth comparison is the band. Right. And the, to go from the band to Bare Naked Lady. Like, I don't think anybody has ever compared no. a, another song that is not a Bare Naked Lady song to being like, hey, this kind of sounds like the Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah, I had to I had to unpack that for a little bit. There, <laughs> there were a lot of laughs, a lot of confusion as to how somebody confused bare naked ladies with Hammoth, but hey make the comparisons whichever way you're gonna make them there's one more i mean we, we just talked about alcohol and even seltzer white claw is coming out with a an eight percent white claw that's called surge and that's just weird to come up with a drink called surge when yeah. that already happened you really fucked up because we had like the easiest transition of all time uh-oh <laughs> What? No, no, I'm saying like from the conversation that yeah. we just had 20 minutes ago. Oh, I about, know. About, I know. We're literally talking about seltzers. Uh, but uh, I mean, like that's the move now. I, I think that that's just like the trend where a company makes an alcohol, the alcohol becomes popular, and they're like, yo, Make what if we stronger. what if we made a stronger version of this? I, I'm an old man, but I have no use for a more potent yeah seltzer. same same because like if if i like if i like an alcohol chances are it's getting me drunk because yeah because I'm, I'm liking it and i'm drinking it uh and i don't i don't necessarily need something that gets me drunk or faster no and think, because think, like that cuts my fun time short because i don't know when to stop <laughs> think of at least in my experience when i've done the seltzer it's been like you're on a lake or something and it's like an all day thing you're outside it's hot right, out you know you're going to be you drinking a want, lot you're yeah. drinking, drinking a lot of them you're drinking them all day you're in the sun yeah, like, you that's don't the want benefit of a seltzer exactly you don't want something that's going to smoke you so right. shout out to bud bud light for keeping their seltzers at a tolerable abv they do have the bud light platinum seltzer which is the raised Right, One. but that's for if you're not outside and if you want to get true. drunk a little quicker. So uh, shut up Budweiser, a seltzer for every occasion. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, somebody also made the point too that like those are absolutely going to give you a terrible hangover because I feel like White Claw already kind of pushes the hangover. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but like hmm. I feel like White Claw can it, it, hit bring some some heavy hangovers. I don't know if I've had a White Claw hangover. I think that, yeah, I don't think I have. I think that, well, yeah, well, typically when I've done White Claw or uh, Hard Seltzer, it's been like a all-day thing. And then by the end of the night, I'm like drunk from all that. So then I drink whiskey or yeah, something. And then I have a hangover <laughs> from whiskey. <laughs> yeah, maybe I maybe I get the, uh, the White Claw hangovers just because like when I'm drinking White Claw, I'm drinking them all day and I'm drinking probably like 40 of them. Were you a... That uh, could be the reason. Were you an OG Surge guy? Um, I, I was alive during the Surge era, and I know Surge and Jolt exist, and I don't think I was ever brave enough, because when I was a kid, I don't know if we've ever talked about that, when I was a kid, Celsa was, uh, soda was not allowed in the house. Really? Yeah, very rarely was soda ever in the house, because my mom was, was against it. So we did soda, but under no circumstances could we touch Surge. So when Surge came out, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably listen to my parents. And that's exactly what I did. I never touched the stuff. But, like, we'd go to CVS. My friends would get it. I'd be like, ooh, I really my would. My parents would kill me. Yeah. Oh, house. my God. If they saw me right now, <laughs> they would flip. I do. do I, somebody tweeted at us the um, like one of the one of the Jolt cans. And it the, like, literally the label on the Jolt can is all the sugar. Just more caffeine. Like, imagine your tagline being like, we kept all the sugar. Right. We just added more bad stuff. Oh, my goodness. Did you do... So, I didn't do that when... It... I didn't do Surge when it was happening. But, and I had to look up. I couldn't remember the name of this. 
I had to look up um, vault. I did do vault in college. If I was writing a paper or something, is it n- vault? Vault. Vault. I think it was called a- vault. A U. V A U. Maybe I'm thinking of jolt, but I feel like <laughs> vault. yeah, you are. Vault. Vault was a sweetened carbonated beverage that was released by the Mountain Coca-Cola Dew? company. It looked a lot like Mountain Dew. Okay. Look at this. You oh, that? yes. Yeah. That's basically Mountain Dew. It tasted just like yeah, Mountain Dew. Yeah, right. So I, got, I would get that, and I'd get like a bag of Chex Mix, some beef jerky, and Vault, Damn. and just be like, I'm going to be up for... 10 hours whatever it's going to be and i think i would drink like a bunch of those things you know what this sounds like what the fucking patreon sleepover oh my god i think my heart i'm like my heart <laughs> is exploding just thinking about drinking i had half of one of those i had my first mountain dew this past week in in forever Ooh. because um i ordered something on uber eats and it was like uh, a value meal where it was like you get a soda and you also get a treat. So I got a Mountain Dew as my soda because I was like, yo, I haven't had Mountain Dew yeah. forever. And then I got a, uh, I got a brownie. Nice, a has nice it, little brownie. And, has uh, anybody gotten Mountain Dew as their soda with a value meal ever? Do you think? So this was, was this, nobody this wasn't above like the a age. Fountain. This wasn't like a fountain. It was a can. Soda. It was a okay. Can. You, you know what it reminded me of? It was like. Um, the I think the last time that I had Mountain Dew in a can might have been like like Babe Ruth baseball at the shack. I remember one of my friends in high school said, "There's nothing like Mountain Dew from the can," and I was like, "I've never thought of that before." But then I had a can of Mountain Dew, and I was like, this "I'm is telling very you, it good. was pretty. It was a Mount, pretty. Yeah. It was a. As soon as I took the first sip, I was like, "This is the most delicious." awful thing in the world you were saying yes can do <laughs> yeah that's right some say no can do Ma- yeah mountain dew i don't th- i don't think anyone's ever gotten like a fountain mountain dew before oh i have really yeah i'm trying to think like what places would have mountain dew i feel like is is uh mcdonald's coke products yep burger king has to be coke products too right or are they pepsi no idea don't go to burger king trash trash restaurant let's see is Burger King... If Burger King offered to sponsor, be the presenting sponsor of brunch, I would say no. Burger King in 1990 switched to Coca-Cola. Let's see. Does it do any of these? I feel yeah, like I'm Coke like, owns a monopoly on all Coke these. Coke or Pepsi. This is very interesting. There's a graphic. Maybe we'll toss it up on the video. Major restaurants that serve Pepsi versus Coca-Cola. Coke has... Uh, Sonic, Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, Red Robin, Subway, Burger King, Wendy's, Domino's. Where is, why aren't I seeing the golden, oh, McDonald's, Pepsi, what does Pepsi even have? Pepsi has Pizza Hut, <laughs> Panera, look. Quiznos, Taco Bell, oh, I have Taco Bell, that's pretty big Right, one. Taco Bell I think is the only one, it has Hooters, okay, but, Applebee's, and, but, but, KFC. But, Okay, here's here's where the the playing field might be a little bit even. It's not evened, but it, here's where it's skewed. Taco Bell has the Baja Blast, which is like a staple menu item of Taco oh, Bell. Oh, that's right. And that is like people go to Taco Bell just to get the Baja Blast, which is I believe that's Mountain Dew. Yes, yeah. I've so, still only been to. I've never been to Taco Bell, and I've, still, I've never I've been had there the ba- once. I've never had the Baja Blast, but now I'm. Now I'm back on the Mountain Dew train. I think that like it's a gateway drug to the Baja Blast. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate that at all. How was the brownie? The brownie was okay. It was. Uh, I've it, still also never done Uber Eats. Really? Yeah. I mean, good for you because Uber Eats is kind of like a. It's a bad thing for local restaurants, just in terms of like how much they skim. Oh off yeah, the top. yeah, that's right. So, um, but I, it's 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 a great service in terms of like ease of use um the brownie was fine you don't want to get your i just feel like you don't want to get your brownies in like a in like a um in a, a pro uh cellophane yeah. wrap whatever yeah i um the soda that i will occasionally have and i'm really i've really for the most part gotten back off soda but i was off it like cold turkey wouldn't touch a drop of it for probably six seven years something like that then i started mixing it in and I don't know. Then I became like a 
yeah, I'll have it from time to time. But the only place I really have it now is when my coworkers and I occasionally get Chick-fil-A. For whatever reason, we all get Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is a very tasty beverage. It's amazing. So, like, that's the only dark soda that I drink. Ooh. That's the only dark soda. Other than, like, root beer, but I haven't had a root beer That's in like your forever. brown liquor? Yeah, <laughs> it's, exactly. It is my uh, it is my brown booze. I, I've i bought Dr. Pepper, the, uh, the old suitcase things or whatever, over the past, like, just, I don't know, whatever you call, like, the long 12-pack yeah, yeah, yeah. cans. Um, I... I've bought in Dr. Pepper a few times over the past couple of months. How's Dr. Pepper from the can? I don't drink it from the can. Okay. I, I I don't like almost any of my soda from the can other than Mountain Dew. I pour it over ice. Dr. Pour Pepper it. on the rocks, baby. So I typically don't do soda with ice. Damn. I like so, like I, I love a fountain soda. It's different. With ice, that's great. But when you if you come home like pouring a glass of Pepsi Hell into yeah. ice, not really. That's the I way just to rather go. it be cold. Oh, Super Bowl, I got Detroit-style pizza, some Pepsi, refrigerated. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bougie. And, and, yeah, and some fries. Did you put it? You put your Pepsi in your uh, your fancy beer fridge? That'd be hilarious. That'd be amazing. You have, like, all these uh, very exciting, very uh, hard-to-get craft beers, and then you got a row of Pepsi. <laughs> and be like, now this one, this one I keep a lot behind lock and key. This is what we call when, Pepsi. When people come over, I'm like, yeah, keep your keep your dirty paws off my Pepsi. Hey, I see you looking. Not for Don't sale. Don't even think about it, pal. Yeah. Don't even think about it. You're using that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not letting you walk across and get near the Pepsis. Nice try. I got rollerblades. Did you? Yeah. Got up Sunday. Said, I'll get rollerblades today. Did you buy the right pair of rollerblade shorts? I don't have rollerblade shorts yet. Mm. I'm going to have to shop around. But it it's I seriously ended up making a day of it. I was like, all right, I got to go get rollerblades. And then as I was about to leave, I was like, what, what am I going to try rollerblades on with? I don't got crew socks. So went shopping for crew socks. Got some socks. Crew socks. Like the socks that go. Uh, oh, okay, uh, gotcha. Like yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I feel like cr- I feel like crew Cabbage socks are area. lower. But no. I no, they, they they go probably halfway okay. up the shin. Those are the ones I like. Yeah, yeah. I I figured that's the kind you got to get for rollerblading. Did a little Googling. Confirmed. Nice. So, yeah. Went, got some socks. Ta- taken for a spin yet? Once I got the socks, I was like, I am 15% of the way there <laughs> <laughs> to owning rollerblades. Went to a hockey store, and they didn't have the kind that I needed. They they had the they had an indoor kind and an outdoor kind. They only had the outdoor the indoor kind in my size. So tried those on. Kid called the store in another town. Went picked them up. Took them for a spin. Own rollerblades. Let me tell you, you got indoor rollerblades. No, I got outdoor rollerblades. They oh. only had the first store I went to. Oh, so had. so he called the other store for yeah. the outdoor version. Because he was like, yeah, we can order them or you can order them online. Blah blah. I was and I was say, like, I am getting rollerblades today. Okay. Sir. Uh, I was gonna say if you got indoor rollerblades and then just started roll it, rollerblading around your apartment, that would have been very funny. That would have been sick. Somebody, uh, somebody asked me. They, they saw that you tweeted about it in my Twitch chat, and they were like, "Yo, how how many days? How many sessions? How many how many uh, how many how many blade sessions? How many how many you know? How many rips? How yeah. many rips does it take DJ to eat shit on rollerblades?" And I was like, "DJ used to play hockey. He's a good skater. He can fucking handle it." So. I appreciate that, but boy was the answer perilously close to one. So uh, l- most people in the chat were like, I am going to hammer the uh, the under on point five. I would hammer the under on point five for anybody. I th- Really? Especially if, I mean, you're just given the circumstances. So I know how to skate. I haven't rollerbladed in a million years. When I go skate, when I rollerblade, I am using my skating abilities and my skating knowledge to help me rollerblade. Mm-hmm. That works great. You get It gets you down the street and everything. But say you live near a park and you're like, I'm going to rollerblade to that park. And when you're almost at the park, you're going down a street that is very steep downhill. This is all hypothetical. All hypothetical. Yeah. 
you're going downhill. You're taking some strides even as you're going downhill. And then you realize... It's a dangerous game. I am going very fast <laughs> in picking up speed. Then you realize... I don't know how to huh, stop. When skating, you never have to solve the problem of, I am going downhill <laughs> very fast. How do I stop? There is no... I mean, on skates, I suppose you would still stop the normal way. Just take a sharp, well, sharp turn. Uh, that was literally going to be my question. I was like, how do you stop on rollerblades? I had no idea. So I was reaching... I was putting my hands out and like <laughs> hitting poles and like anything I could to slow me down a teeny bit, but I was still huff. I was going so fast. And at the bottom of the street, there was there's a little parking area for that park. And I was like, I'm just gonna have to turn in there and, and really just glide around a little bit. Yeah, just lose some momentum. Exactly. If a car was going in or out when I turned. <laughs> There's Splat. absolutely nothing that could be done. I was wow. going to get smoked. Oh man. So I was either going I was prepared. I was like I'm either going to hit a car or I'm just going to have to intentionally wipe out so I don't hit a car. So I'm just say all right, I'm just going to scrape up the side of my like the, the entire side of my body. And fortunately there was no car. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. The idea of of you going out and like buying rollerblades, and making, immediately, it a day, making a day of it, and yeah. then just get immediately getting smoked by a car on your first run. That would have been, been. I I would have prayed uh, to the heavens above that you were okay, but it would have been the funniest story of all. Time. Oh, it would have sucked if I wasn't okay because then there was no laughing at it. Right, because I it wanted, is objectively funny. I wanted. I I may have been thinking this in in the moment too. Like, this would make for the easiest instagram post in the world <laughs> just two pictures that's just like got rollerblades yeah just like, like my fresh new rollies the first <laughs> the fr the, no, maybe the three tweets the, the first or the first tweet would be no more bullshit i'm getting rollerblades second one was i made that did the bernie meme and that i am once again asking and i just covered up everything but i and replaced it with got rollerblades <laughs> and the third picture would be me in the hospital, which I don't even know would happen because if you're in the hospital these days, people can't come to the hospital and see you. What would it, do you think a doctor or a nurse would take a photo of me in the hospital so I can make fun of myself? Yeah, you can take a selfie too. Assuming that your phone, I don't, your phone wasn't a casualty of you getting smoked by a car at 40 miles an hour on rollerblades. Oh my god, I was really, I was like, do I get smoked by a car? Do I just like like eat shit into like do, you, do I like bite the bullet and and like dive into the grass or something? Yeah, I was like, th there wasn't grass. There was no grass. You said you're going to a park. Yeah, I wasn't at the asphalt park. Asphalt park. I wasn't at the park. I was going down a street, so I was on the sidewalk, <laughs> so going down like a street, not yet at the park. A percentage of the way to the park, and you, that's even funnier. Like you didn't even make it to the park. Yeah, it was holy smokes, but. Uh, PSA. Some, some rollerblades have like those like stoppers, but I'm assuming that yeah. you didn't get the. the those are like I think the like, kids like, rollerblades like, have those, those. Are, like bowling alleys with bumpers. Exactly, those are bumper lanes. I um, I did. Uh, totally unrelated. Sh shortly after, I did end up on a website that says how to stop if you're going downhill. You drag your right leg, or you I guess your whichever your, your one blade, of your legs. Not your, not like your leg, the rollerblade, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. Just, like, drag your I, leg I behind you. Okay. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to go that on that same street like, and try it there. Maybe like try it on a bunny hill first. Yeah. That seems know. like a maybe like a downhill driveway. Maybe seems a little safer. My my driveway is a little bit. What do you downhill. think I have access to? I have a I have a downhill driveway. Me... It's slightly downhill. I think that you could glide down. See if that that method works. I I just don't want to see you trying to drag that right foot and then you going into a, like a tornado spin down the hill. That'd be hilarious if someone's <laughs> if I'm in the hospital and they're like. So what happened? You're going downhill, and then well, why did you drag Honestly, your leg? You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Honestly, maybe the funnier story than you, the funnier than you getting smoked on the first run is you Google going on the first run, making it out by the skin of your teeth, googling how to stop, and then eating shit while trying that to stop. That being wrong. Yeah. That being wrong. In the uh, moment, I was like, not in the moment, but in in hindsight, I'm like, did I have time while going down that street? To call your get parents on my phone and, and, and to call Google. your parents and tell them you love them. <laughs> no, they were pretty upset that I got rollerblades. So were they? My dad was like, 
don't get rollerblades. Uh, yeah, I was. I sent him a picture. I was like, rollerblades acquired, motherfuckers. <laughs> and he was like, What was his reasoning? Dude. Like, you're not cool, or was he like, you're gonna kill yourself? Yeah, he was like, uh, you might be like a little older than you think. And no, no, it's. I mean, like, if y- people people ride he bikes was around, for, this he was age, saying for like, safety's sake. Oh, okay. He was saying like, I don't know if like. Yeah, you, you might be a little past your rollerblading it's, prime. No, I mean like it's, rollerblading is fine. It, it's you don't want to you don't be the skateboard guy. I would love to be the skateboard. I would love to be the guy that learns how to skateboard, but like I'm I think I'm past that. I mean, if I think you missed the train, learn yeah. If you learn how to do an ollie and showed anybody that you would get the most insincere cool, we're just dude. being nice because we're friends yeah. with you. Like oh my god, that <laughs> is so awesome. Shout out anybody who skateboards, but. I don't no, know. Skateboarding like, rules. Never, yeah, I just like think that it's I've I've missed the the opportunity to become a skateboarder. Maybe, maybe not. The the uh, best time to plant a tree was twenty years ago. Yeah, the best time to learn to, to skateboard was probably twenty years ago too. No, the rest of the expression goes the second best time is today. Oh. Which is incorrect. Yeah, no. Second best time would be like nineteen years ago. Right, like if you plant a tree today, the, the tree is gonna grow in in what f- ten to fifteen years, yeah, twenty you, years. You're what not. am I gonna be the guy who fucking finally learns to skateboard at 40, 50 years old? No, that's true. Yeah, um, you're probably not seeing strong returns on that tree. If you don't mind me asking, how much do the rollerblades run you? Because like it's, it seems like you probably got a nice pair of rollerblades. Uh, I mean, they only had. T- they had the Tom Brady special there. They legitimately only had two types of rollerblades. And this was a hockey store. Um, but it was $185. Yeah, that's what I, I assume. Like, yeah, I'm assuming that you could probably get, like, a pair of, like, $50 rollerblades. But you get the, the ones with bumpers and the, the ones that disintegrate on your feet. Yeah. When you go, like, downhill towards the park. So you're probably <laughs> lucky that you got the high-end brand. I don't know. If I got the – maybe if, if I got the kids' ones that had the rubber stoppers, I'd be like, ooh, going a little fast. And people be like, no, no podcast story with, with those. That's true, man. That was a. Uh, it. I mean, it's it's hard to explain because you don't know what the street looks like or anything. But the the parking area is on the left, and I knew that it was there, but I couldn't see it yet. And I'm like, the anticipation for what is the situation down there was unbelievable. And then when I saw it and saw there were no cars there, I was like, oh boy. My. Deej is living. <laughs> yeah, right. I would just fully assume that you were like halfway checked out to being like, okay, I'm going to die. Yeah. I don't even think I was that happy when I saw I think I, saw, I was like, okay, so this isn't going to be as big a to-do as I thought it was going to be. Well, I mean, you being you being slightly disappointed that you were going to live. Yeah, very seems upper to end. Check, on, check out, yeah. Could be me. Could be me. <laughs> uh, this, there's a skateboard kid in uh, the Mighty Ducks. What's it called? Mighty Ducks Game Changers? Yeah finally watched it it's okay it's a pleasant watch yeah it's pleasant like i'm, I'm enjoying it it's not like the holy shit you got to check this out but like i i look forward to the, that 30 minutes every week because i uh it's it's pleasant um it's got a little something for everybody it's it's got some it's got some misses and it's probably entirely predictable but that's okay by me there was i was so happy that they made there was a funny twist that I was like, it would be so funny if they made this a twist, and they did. And that's a kid moves from Toronto and looks extremely Swedish, and they really just pump as many hockey stereotypes as they can into this one kind of confusing character. He is like literally William Nylander. He, he, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. They make him look just like William Nylander, down to the Maple Leafs jersey when he shows up. And he's all like casual and really cool and they're like the oh you got down. these awesome skates and he's like eh they take me from a to b and he just seems like this like really really ho- very hockey kid and uh he sucks yeah and i was like even it'll be so funny if this kid sucks but they're not gonna do that because they need to have a good player no they made him <laughs> he's by far the worst player very funny uh just an issue i don't know if maybe i would have thought this if i watched my ducks when i was a kid uh like as an adult, like if if thirty two year old DJ watched Mighty Ducks for the first time, I'm sure I'd be like, ah, they got this stuff wrong. But as a kid, you don't notice it. They needed some sort of either adult consultant or hockey consultant because did you notice the uh, you notice some of the flubs? No. The, first of all, the kid has the, one, the coach of the Ducks, who they're the bad guys. 
has long hair and in like the first minute it's two kids doing a hockey podcast which i think i've pointed this out every sports thing ever always has like a play-by-play happening in movies when no but there's two kids they're like we're alive from ducks practice and blah blah and they're kind of serving as the the narrator uh the coach has long hair and they're like Check out the coach. He's got a mullet. And no, he doesn't. He has no, like, he just he has just long, has like what I have. Hair. Yeah, yeah. He just has like long hair. And then they, they eventually say flow. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's at least correct. But p- mullet has to be one of the more misused, misused. terms. Right. Well, I think a lot of, uh, I mean, just the, in general, we've talked about this, but, but like, there are a lot of misconceptions about long hair. Like, long hair doesn't necessarily mean good hair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, you no, know, they like mullet is, I think, probably pretty frequently misused. Like, if somebody has like unkept hair, they're like, "Oh, check out that mullet." Right. It's like, no, it's, absolutely not. No. Mullets are clean as fuck, my dude. Right. Yeah, it's it's like literally kept up. It's kept the sides are kept tight. Yeah, yeah. Business in the front, party in the back. They also, so you didn't notice when the coach is saying that there's going to be hitting. Uh yeah, where it's uh yeah the 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 league that they just uh, arrive at is allowing hitting right, but he says there will be. Uh, he says now allowed, for checking, and it's like video of a hit, back checking, video of a hit, back checking is getting back and playing defense. Right, yeah. And, uh, they weren't allowed to play defense before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what? So they, that's a good. That's a good point. I didn't. Ca- I didn't pick up on that when it happened. I threw my hands up in the air. I was like, "Yo, they needed a hockey consultant for this." Uh, but I don't know I if mean, that's... you could throw a check on the back check, but that like that doesn't in doesn't necessarily mean by definition back checking. Right, and, and but again, it's presented as now legal. Right, <laughs> playing defense. Back, which I maybe that is fair. maybe the reason there's a million goals in youth hockey games is because. They are not allowed to play defense, and maybe that's written into the rules, and we've just forgotten about it. But it's pretty good. It's uh, I'm gonna keep watching. Gordon Bombay. I love super Gord- depressed. I, I love Put cranky on a Gordon of Bombay. LBs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I tweeted this out, but I was like, I really hope that he uh, he never changes. I know that he's going to. I know he's gonna come around. He's gonna snap out of his funk. But man, I love that guy. Miserable. He's so funny. Do you like the kid from uh, Good Boys? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of confused age-wise because I was like, hmm. pretty sure he's playing somebody, uh, somebody young, younger, or no, he's like he's in high school, playing right? Somebody older, like four years ago. Yeah, yeah. What is he now? Like, is he in high school? No, probably middle school. I think seems so. like a middle school kind of show. I don't know. Yeah, maybe late middle school. I was, I was very confused by that, but I do love the uh, the podcast kid. He's very funny. Yeah. He's awesome. He uh, they all they lean a lot into how seriously parents take stuff these days and how everything is like pick a path. This he's a podcast. He's a hockey podcaster because he gave up on the idea of being a hockey player at like six years old because he was like, I wasn't very good then. So realistically, like, what's the point? How good am I going <laughs> to yeah. get? But it's um, it's a good time. I'm going to keep watching it. I like it so far. Same. Yeah, so that's that. Check us out on Friday. We're going to... Pete's about to listen to some System of a Down Friday. That's going to be the good times. Hell yeah.